Hey what's up? Photoshop 2021 just released with a ton of new features and in this video I want to show you a few of the more useful ones, especially for landscape photography. And besides those, Adobe has also added a lot of other features which may not be that useful but still are a lot of fun to play around with. I'm not going to show everything that's new in this version, just what I think are the coolest and most useful additions. So without much more talking, here are the new features. Now first of course, since it's the most important for me personally, the new sky replacement. For this, all you have to do is go to edit and then just simply hit the sky replacement button and you can see Photoshop really does a good job at replacing the sky. You can choose between different skies like blue skies, more spectacular one with dramatic sunset colors or specific sunset skies. The great thing about this is you can also use your own skies and I'm pretty sure I will make use of this quite a lot. Once you have chosen the sky, you can further work on the masking by shifting the edge or fading the edge. You can also make the sky a little brighter or a little darker as you like. Change the temperature to warm it up or make it colder. Scale the sky and you can even adjust the foreground a little bit. So let's say you can give the foreground a little more warmth or even adjust the brightness of the foreground. And once you're done, just hit OK. And the great thing about this, Photoshop still lets you adjust those separate layers and the masking. And this whole process is totally non-destructive. Also just to show you, with those little tree branches in the back, you can see how good of a job Photoshop did right here. Then next up I want to show you the new neural filters, which you can find under the filter menu, neural filters. Those aren't exactly that useful for my landscape photography, but there are a few really really cool things we found here. So here we have the featured filters with skin smoothing and style transfer, which I personally don't use, so let's go straight to the beta filters. And that's where it gets interesting. First I want to talk about the death aware haze. That's just a way to add some more atmospheric haze to your images. I usually do this in Lightroom or with the camera raw editor and some negative dehaze, but I also want to give this new filter a try. So you can see right away the haze does look a little bit strange, but let's just reduce the depth of the haze and it should look much more realistic. Since the color is a little bit too warm in my opinion, we can reduce the warmth of the haze and we get a much more natural look. I do have to say I am not that satisfied, but maybe that's just because this picture isn't quite fitting for a haze effect. Next there's this new super zoom filter. With this tool you should be able to scale up an image without losing too much detail, but I do have to say I can't spot much of a difference, so maybe I'm using this feature wrong right here. I still wanted to show you this. Then with the colorize tool I want to show you another neural filter and this actually does a pretty cool job I think. As you may guess this will colorize black and white images. So here you can see it did get the color of the sky, the trees and the grass in the foreground right. There are still a few areas missing. Those can be manually fixed. For this I'm clicking on this little color box. Let's change the sky right here, let's make it a little more bluish, okay. And then in this little preview window I can click on the area which I want to turn in the blue color. And this way I can go through the whole image, so let's make the grass a little more yellow. So I have applied a point right here and now let's change the color. As you can see, this works really really cool. Not that useful for my landscape photography as well, but if you have any black and white images which you want to colorize, this can be quite helpful. I am not much of a portrait photographer, but with those smart portrait filters, Adobe has added a fun way to play around with those kind of portraits. So let's activate the smart portrait filter. Here you have a few different options. You can set the expressions, change the age, 
change the look, the hair thickness, head direction and even the light direction. Photoshop automatically detects the face right here and now watch what happens when I turn up the happiness. You can see more teeth are revealed, the positions of the ears and the nose is changed a little bit and all in all looks quite realistic, but of course it doesn't work for every image. So let's see, uh, let's change the gaze a little bit. This will make her look a little bit more to the right. Let's also change the head direction. And as you can see, here it starts to become a problem. I do have to say, with this feature I played around the most, just because it's a lot of fun. And that's also the reason I wanted to show you this, although it's not landscape photography. Of course, I also want to show you the aging effect, which didn't work that well on the other image, so I'm using this one right here. Let's activate the smart portrait and just turn up the facial age. And again, you can see in this particular case, Photoshop is doing a great job at making this guy a little older. So let's just for fun turn also up the happiness. So then let's skip the rest of the neural filters. The last thing I want to show you in this video are some new quick actions, which might be useful in some cases. So let's say we have this mushroom shot right here and the background is a little bit too chaotic. With the quick actions, we can make the background a little more blurry. Therefore, let's go to help. Photoshop help and here you can find those quick actions and here let's say blur the background and apply. You can see the background became a little more blurry. Sadly this filter did also affect the top of the mushroom a little bit and the foreground but that's not a big deal. We can simply use a black brush and use that layer mask to brush out the blur effect and this way we can still keep the background. As said, not that useful for me personally, but it might be helpful for some of you. And then the last thing I want to show you with this cute puppy. Again, let's go to help, Photoshop help, quick actions. And here we can say, for example, remove the background and apply. And Photoshop automatically did create this layer mask. Of course, for this image it was rather easy, but I wouldn't use this quick action on more complex images anyway. Alright, and that's about it for the features I wanted to show you from the new Photoshop 2021. If you have any feedback, let me know in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.